All right, hello, mighty seventh grade history students. Today we are working through slides 25 through 45 of the Amentum tutorial, The Reformation, Causes and Effects. Uh, this section is called Protestantism Spreads in Europe. So um, Luther's uh, religion, Lutheranism, was hugely successful, uh, especially in Germany. Um, he kind of stuck it to the man by going against the Catholic Church. So what he did is he inspired the peasants to kind of do the same thing. They, there were a lot of peasants who were poor, working on farms, um, working mostly as like indentured servants. They didn't have a lot of money. Uh, they saw Luther challenging the Catholic Church, and they thought, we are going to challenge our situation as well. So they had a peasants' revolt in 1524. They thought Luther would support him because he was a fan of the underdog. Turns out most of his friends... Uh, were princes and kings and things like that. He did not help them, citing that they were using violence. I don't know how else you have a revolt without violence, but um, two was quickly crushed. A lot of peasants uh, were killed. Um, the revolt did not go anywhere. Martin Luther was not a fan of the peasants, as it turns out. Uh, here's a video about the peasants' revolt on slide 27. The nobles, on the other hand, also supported Lutheranism, and uh, Luther was a little more sympathetic to them, being a powerful person himself. Um, they were using Lutheranism for political reasons. They did not want uh, to pay taxes to the church. They did not want to be subjects to the Catholic Church. So before, they didn't have a choice. If you wanted to belong to a church, you had to be Catholic. In this case, uh, now you had another choice. You could be Lutheran. Um, so they signed a letter. Uh, to protest the Catholic Church, said that Luther's teachings were correct, shouldn't be considered heresy, which means um, something that goes against the church. It's a very bad crime. Uh, and so since they were protesting, this led Lutheranism and all of the um, religious groups to follow to be named Protestant. So there's Catholics and there's Protestants, and those are the two uh, main branches of Christianity in the West. Uh, the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope... They did not really care for this, so they started a giant war. It lasted roughly 30 years, um, and they ended in 1555, and basically the princes won. The nobles won, uh, having used Lutheranism for political gain and succeeding. All right. Now, as you know, uh, as soon as one person starts doing something, right, Luther broke off and started his own church. That gave other people the idea, I'm going to break off and start my own church, too. So you had a bunch of new uh, Catholic, not Catholic, Christian churches, um, Christian religious groups. The first one, uh, led by John Calvin, if you remember from Luther's um, position, right? he said, nothing you do on earth can will get you into heaven. And John Calvin took this to the extreme by saying, not only will, does nothing you do get you into heaven, but you don't even get a choice. God has already decided before you were born whether or not you're going to heaven. Uh, this idea is known as predestination, which you see here on slide 30. Predestination is just the belief that God has already decided what's going to happen to you before you're even born. <laughs> All right, so you have no effect whatsoever on whether you go to heaven or whether you go somewhere else. Um, somehow, though, he still wants people to work hard, and he still uh, made a bunch of rules for people, like no working or playing on Sunday, no gambling, no dancing, no extravagant dress, that means fancy dress, no fighting or swearing. Uh, you would think that this would be not super popular based on the, the strict restrictions, but in fact, uh, they reviewed his community as a model community, and it spread far and wide across Europe. So uh, the main thing to take away, though, is predestination. John Calvin, seen here, um, was a French uh, theologian, French thinker, who said, uh, what is going to happen to you has already been decided. So an interesting take. All right, here's slide 31, some, if you want to put the answers in. All right, Protestant sects in Europe. Uh, this uh, sect is another word for group. So these are Protestant groups in Europe. Many of these denominations are still around today. Uh, they were numerous. Once one person started a church, then another person started a church. The Catholic Church kind of lost control of the situation. Um, you'll see here in Scotland, they had Presbyterians. Um... In England, they had Anglicans, which we're going to learn about here in just a second. Uh, France was the Huguenots, uh, which was the Calvinism. 
Netherlands were the Anabaptists, which uh, decided when you got baptized, if you got baptized as a baby or as an adult. And then uh, here we have Calvinists, somehow different from the French Huguenots. All right, this is not on the quiz or on the test, but it is interesting. All right, let's talk about the English Reformation. So the other big church to come out of this was the Anglican Church, uh, started by King Henry VIII. So we're going to learn all about King Henry VIII here. This is him. Um, he became King of England in 1509, right? Uh, he was Catholic. He was a proud Catholic. He supported the Pope. The Pope gave him some honors. However, he and his wife Catherine, Queen Catherine, they had trouble having a son. They had a daughter um, named Mary. And back then they did not understand how... Um, they did not understand a lot about biology or, or having children. So King Henry, being the king, said, I am all-powerful, all-knowing, I can never be wrong. So there must be something wrong with Catherine who will not give me enough children and certainly won't give me a son. So he wanted a divorce. Uh, if you don't know, divorce is against Catholic teaching. So he went to the uh, Pope and he said, can I have a uh, divorce? And they said, no. <laughs> he said, tough cookies, I'm getting it anyway, right? So he had a friend installed as an archbishop. That archbishop granted him a divorce. King Henry got kicked out of the church. Um, so he had still now no sons and no church. What does he do? Well, he got a divorce anyway. And he uh, married a friend of his wife's, Anne. They had a daughter, Elizabeth, uh, and could not give Henry a son. For those of you who understand biology, that was not Anne's problem. But, oh, sorry, I missed a slide here. So he gets a divorce, but then he gets another divorce from Anne. He ends up killing her, <laughs> um, having her executed for treason. Um, and then he creates his own church, the Church of England, um, because now he has no sons and no church. So he, d he creates what's called the Anglican Church. Uh, it's basically the Catholic Church, except instead of the Pope being in charge, the King of England is in charge, which is very convenient for Henry VIII, seeing as he is also the King of England. All right, so King Henry says, everybody in England, you have to accept my role. Uh, some people did not like that. Some people did not like uh, that he created a brand new church, the Anglican Church. Um, so he had those people killed. He was the king. He could do what he wanted. He seized all the church property. He seized all the wealth. Um, and he left the Catholic Church, but he still that, that he still liked it. He didn't have any problem with it, except that he wasn't in charge of it. So he translated the Bible into English, and the Anglican services look very, very similar to Catholic services, probably two of the most similar um, religions in the world. All right. Yes, here's Anne. Did not give him a son, so he had her killed. He had several other people killed for not giving him a male heir. Uh, eventually, he did get one from Jane Seymour. This is uh, his wife, Jane Seymour, who he married right after Anne. Uh, he had a son named Edward. Uh, Edward died at age 15. So um, King Henry died. Edward became king, sort of, but he was a child. He died at age 15. And so he, the England was ruled by his daughters. This, uh, this is Edward here, who died at the age of 15. He never really had much power, but he was a Protestant. He tried to do what his father wanted. Um, this is Queen Mary I. She was a Catholic, and she wanted uh, England to be Catholic again. She was held up a little bit by um, the Parliament, like the legislature. Uh, but she really pushed for Catholic teachings to the point of where she would kill uh, people who were Protestant, people who wanted to be Anglican. She just had them killed, so much so that she needed... Uh, received the nickname Bloody Mary because she killed so many people. Fun fact, her favorite way of killing people was burning them. Yikes. This is Queen Elizabeth I. So Mary died. She was pretty old. She was the oldest child of King Henry. So when she died, um, her half-sister Elizabeth took over, Elizabeth I. She moved England back to being Protestant and following the Anglican Church. Um... And all that this means is that they hadn't sorted this out. There were people of multiple religions, mainly just Catholic and Protestant, fighting for power, arguing who should be in charge. Uh, Elizabeth, however, by all accounts, was a good queen. She was tolerant of people if you were Catholic, 
okay, you get to be Catholic, but she encouraged people to be uh, Anglican. And she ushered in what Emetum calls a golden age of um, England. And you can click on each of these people to learn more about them. Anyway, slide 42 has uh, some matching here for you to do. And then slide 43 is a summary that takes us to the end of this lesson. So if you have any questions, as always, email your teachers. Uh, and that is the Reformation. Have yourself a mighty day.